Okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am asked by a um, mentor to give a special revision lecture last minute for you guys. Uh, but I couldn't commit to the time because of uh, family matters. So I am giving you this uh, lecture video. For chapter 5, you asked me to explain about Lewis. Lewis definition of SE? No, Lewis structure. So write Lewis structure, not Lewis. Molecular. Molecular what? Molecular shape? Molecular geometry? Molecular polarity? It's not specified here. Hybrid. Hybrid what? Hybrid state? Hybrid orbital? Hybridization? Uh, explanation. So when we look at the word hybrid, I would always remember of the hybrid car. Uh, so you are not specific enough with the questions. Right, there are six molecules there and then chapter 7, buffer solution and acid-based titration. Okay, so maybe I can summarize everything here according to the things that I have given to you. So I'm going to take bit by bit from everywhere that is available. The thing is, I could not, I could not summarize everything from chapter 5, 6 to 7 within 2 hours of time. It is a long process. The journey takes 9 weeks. Uh, so you need to actually listen to our lectures from the beginning. And understand it back then and then do the exercises continuously istiqamah and if you ask me to do this last minute like today I don't know how much you were gonna get okay all right but I will try and, and, and do my best to to conclude everything okay finally the last compound that we have to draw is the nitric acid, HNO3. Right. HNO3 is basically coming from or ionized partially to become H plus and NO3 minus. So let's draw the nitrate ion first. So N would be in the middle, oxygen would be surrounding it, and we have one, two, three, four, five electron valence for nitrogen. Oxygen, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and six. Seven. This is where the extra electron is. Okay. And then um, we draw um, the dative bond here. So we need to move this one over here. So now I'm going to uh, delete this electron over here okay now this is the electron valence for oxygen one two three four five six and then uh, we are going to also form a double bond over here uh, one two three four five six oh i forgot to remove this electron okay now what happened is we want to put the h plus now the h plus is will be situated over here ah because this extra electron here actually coming from the hydrogen atom. So there you go. This is the structure of a nitric acid. Maybe I can do the summary for chapter 5 by using only this just one ion, um, nitrate ion. 
the first thing that you need to know is to uh, draw the the wind structure for nitrogen atom. Uh, nitrogen atom has five electron valence. How do you know that? Go back to the yellow pages, find the proton number, do the electronic configuration and find the electron valence or the val electron uh, uh, at the outer orbital. So from the video just now, you've known that it's going to have a double bond and it's going to form a dative bond. All covalent here is all covalent and a single bond over here. So this is all the five electron valence around nitrogen atom. Okay, the second step is for you to draw the um, the wave structure for the compound. This compound is called nitrate ion. It's a type of polyatomic ion and it has three oxygens surrounding it. Uh, so as I've shown to you uh, yeah. at the beginning of chapter 5, you need to calculate the number of electron valence for nitrogen, uh, 5, and then oxygen, how many? Uh, 6 times 3, uh, 18 plus 5 plus 1, uh, mine, plus 1, yes, because this is a negative charge. So all together is 24. It should be 24. Uh, so let's do the, the uh, bonds, the covalent bonds. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then another electron from outside. This is the negative one. Okay, so to, to know that we will get 24, we calculate the electrons another way. So how many lone pair does, do we have? Okay, lone pair, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, so, there are 16 lone pairs of electron. And then, how many... Jangan rosak astaghfirullahaladzim. Hi, sorry, my baby used the scissor to damage uh, the slim mode. Okay, the bonding pair here is... Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so, there are 8... Uh, electron that is involved in the bonding pair here, here, and here. So, they are 24. So, we have the correct Lewis structure. Okay. Now, uh, the next thing that we need to know is the former charge. We need to find the former charge for nitrogen. So, the formula is 5 is the valence electron minus how many lone pairs of electron does it have? None. It has four bonding pairs. This is one. Okay. So one here. And then for oxygen that has the double bond. Okay. It would have six minus how many electron uh, lone pair? One, two, three, four. So there are four minus two. Uh, so this is zero. Uh, two here is for the double bond. And then and the second and the third oxygen has the same uh, feature because it is only a single bond there. So, 6 minus how many electron uh, lone pair? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 minus, um, sorry, this one is plus. Sebab dia dalam kurungan eh. Okay. So, plus 1 is a single bond, which is negative 1. And the same for uh, the other one. So, total up everything, that is negative 1. So, negative 1 should be the total charge for this polyatomic ion. Alright. 
So now the molecular geometry. How do we find the molecular geometry? Uh, before that, the resonance structure. You must know that the double bond can move around whereby the electron delocalized among all the oxygen. Alright? Okay. So next, uh, um, don't forget this. Uh, this will give you one mark if you are asked about resonance. Okay, now, um, maybe the question would be like this. Uh, determine the geometrical uh, shape for this compound using V, S, E, P, R method. Uh, what is this? Valence shell electron uh, repulsion theory. Electron pair repulsion theory. Uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So, you have to show the valence shell electron pair. How? By, Lu Lu by Lewis structure. You have to draw the Lewis structure. Uh, sometimes the question doesn't ask you to use VSEPR method. So, you can just uh, draw this trigonal planar. But if the question asks you to draw... Uh, the molecular geometry, determine the molecular geometry using the SEPR method, you must draw the Lewis structure. The marks allocated there would be a lot. Okay, so when you draw the Lewis structure, you can see that the electron pair in the nitrogen is not a lone pair. So the uh, angle would be the same here. 120 degrees same with here and same with here so you're going to have a trigonal plana you're going to have a trigonal plana all right <clears throat> now we look at um, hybridization uh, hybridization is determined by using a uh, um, ground state, excited state, and hybrid state orbital uh, diagram. So, you know we have to do for nitrogen because nitrogen is the central atom. We want to know the hybridization of nitrogen atom. So, 2s, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Even using even doing this, sometimes students are blur. Why? Because their chapter 3 and chapter 4 is not strong enough. They don't even know nitrogen has 5 electron valence. They don't even know what the orbital of the valence electron that we should draw here. Uh, so, um, if you are not sure, you have to flip back through chapter 3. There is no shortcut to it. Okay, You cannot memorize you have to understand. Okay. Next, for excited state, it's the same thing because we don't have any uh, empty orbital uh, for the elements of period 2. And then for hybrid state, okay, we are going to have sp2 and one unhybrid here. One uh, unhybrid orbital here. So, we are going to be dealing with a pi bond. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this will be a parallel. Uh, this would be a parallel uh, side by side. Uh, pertindihan side by side. So, it becomes pi. Uh, so, how do, we do, how do we draw this? So, nitrogen in the middle, okay, this is the sp2, this is the sp2, and this is the sp2, okay? And then, you're going to have the oxygen over here, this is the oxygen, this is the oxygen, okay? Alright, eh, this one is not here, this one is here, 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 this shows it is a sigma bond. Where is the pi just now? The pi is here. Okay, and also here. Uh, so, this is the pi bond. 
this is the pi bond uh, so you need to do a bracket and the negative sign here this is the orbital overlapping for no3 minus and you're going to get three marks over here four marks over here and then uh, uh, two marks at least over here um, two marks at least over here um, the least you can get one mark here so for one compound an essay question can ask you a lot of things so you need to be clear of how many valence electron for the central atom uh, for the compound that you're going to deal with okay for nitrile fluoride, I've shown to you here the Lewis structure and the resonance structure. You can see that there is only two resonance structure because the uh, double bond can uh, switch uh, you for oxygen only, not for fluorine. Because fluorine has seven electron valence, but oxygen has six, so it uh, the electron can delocalize among oxygen atom only, so it has only two resonance structure compared to three from the uh, previous uh, uh, structure NO3 minus. So uh, you have uh, seen the uh, ground state, uh, excited state, and hybrid state for uh, the central atom N in NO3 to minus in NO3 minus is the same so I'm just going to show you how to draw the the, the hybridization is it has um, one one two three uh, three um, three bonding uh, three sigma bond uh, so when it has three sigma bond it is sp2 uh, sp2 uh, so you're going to draw the sp2 like this it's a trikana plana the same and then you're going to draw the oxygen over here okay don't forget to label maybe i forgot to label this uh, oops it's not overlapping should overlap over here this is a sigma this is the sigma and this is the sigma and then uh, we have one pi here. Uh, one pi here is not included in the hybrid calculation. So we draw another uh, 2p over here and then we combine them, label them pi. Uh, so it, uh, it doesn't have any bracket because it doesn't have charge. So uh, this is the orbital uh, overlapping for NO2F. Okay. For I3 minus, I am skipping the Lewis structure. Okay, this is the Lewis structure. I will just give you the answer. And then this is the molecular geometry. Why the molecular geometry is linear? Because it comes from a trigonal bipyramidal structure. You can see that um, the three um, the three uh, what do you call this? Um, uh, the three place where is going to bond with another atom if it's a trigonal bipyramidal, it is empty and it is occupied by a lone pair. So uh, it's going to become a linear. All right. So remember to draw the Lewis structure if you are asked to find the molecular geometry by using the VSEPR method. So now uh, let's look at the ground state for, uh, how do we spell ground? Ground state, ground state for I. So there is actually two answers for this. One is when uh, I is an ion. Sorry, when I is an atom. So it is at period five. Uh, I as an atom, it has seven electron valence. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so Hans rule, you have to apply Hans rule here. And then another ground state would be when it 
already becomes an ion. So it's going to have eight electron valence. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Okay. At a high uh, excited state, at excited state, we are going to have um, extra empty 1, 2, 3, 5P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5D. Okay, so all of the electron is going to be excited. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ha. It's a very powerful um, excitation energy used. So hybrid state, uh, they are going to come back to uh, the way they are going to be very uh, stable. So um, they are going to be paired here because they are accumulating the place where uh, it's going to bond with another atom if there is and then uh, there are three lone pairs over here uh, one there's already six uh, so six seven eight uh, so what is the hybrid type sp3 d2 uh, okay so let's draw the uh, the i so this is one Hybrid state, two hybrid state, three hybrid state. So you draw the lone pairs inside. Okay, these are the lone pairs. And then you draw another one, another two. Okay, this one is the single, single covalent bond. And then you're going to draw the, uh, the outside uh, iodine. Uh, so this is the uh, sigma bond. Okay, it has two sigma bond and three lone pairs, so it's going to become sp3d2. So this is the square bracket. Okay, this is also i. This is also i. Uh, so that's it. This is the orbital uh, overlapping for the uh, polyatomic ion triiodide. Okay, for XeF2. Uh, Xe is also an element of period 5. So we're going to write the ground state. The ground state for 5s and 5p here. Xe has 8 electron valence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, it also has empty d orbital here. I uh, did not draw it yet. We're going to use it here in excited state um, so we're going to use here so all of the electron is going to uh, go uh, all the way to five empty d orbitals here eight of them and then the hybrid state one two three four five six because you have uh, two uh, two uh, lone pairs here Okay, and then you have four bonding pairs over here. Four bonding pairs. Uh, so you plus this together, it becomes six. What is six? Sp3d2. So we're going to have sp3d2 over here. There is two lone pairs. One, two, three, four. So everything is eight. Right. So how are we going to draw the orbital overlapping? First, we draw the... Um, lone pairs of electron and then we draw the um, bonding pairs and each bonding pairs uh, is bonded with 2p of f sigma bond labeled there okay and another one here for fluorine sigma and another one lastly is here so this is the orbital overlapping for XEF for the type of shape is square plana. Square plana is uh, the molecular geometry of uh, xenon tetrafluoride. It's the only uh, compound that is nonpolar. 
even though it has a loan pair because the loan pair is the same on top and at the bottom so they cancel each other so it is non-polar okay i f 4 plus ha, dekat soalan pun silap taip tu so um <coughs> For I F4 plus, uh, this is the Lewis structure. Uh, please don't do the line. Okay. Make sure you uh, make the cross and dots for the line if you want to use VSE PR method. Okay. So what we don't have here is the molecular shape. For I for IF4 plus it's going to be uh, you have the uh, lone pair over there and then you're going to have um, what you call that um, bowl line here okay and then you have that one the shaded line here because it is at the back so this is uh, the pyramidal, the square pyramidal, square pyramidal, because we know that when we have the double uh, electron lone pair on top, it's going to push the bonding pair going down. So that's why it's going to become pyramid crown. So I, as we have known just now, uh, it's going to have uh, two types of ground state orbital uh, 5s 1 2 3 5p when it is atom it has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 but when it is an ion i plus is going to have only six electrons so one two three four five six so an excited state is going to be uh, involved with the 5d this is 5s this is 5p so one two three four five six now at hybrid state is going to have uh, sp3d now there is only five orbital one for lone pair and another four one two three four for the sigma so you're going to have uh, one plus four is five sp3d so one two is for the lone pair three four five six how do we draw this so this is the lone pair over here this is the uh, bold uh, what do you call that? Uh, hybrid orbiter and then the F or I have to draw F very small here because of the uh, size of the space. And then this is the uh, 1 and 2, the shaded, shaded part here. So uh, this is F uh, and this is F. Okay, so don't forget the square bracket and the plus sign so this is for i4 plus yes this is actually question number 13 in your page 161 orange book okay sf4 is very familiar because it's it is one of the first compound that we ask you to do in the f4 pages uh, exercise so uh, the um, Lewis structure is like this. Uh, S has six electron valence, and uh, four of them is going to be occupied with uh, covalent bonding with fluorine, four of them, and another two is going to become the lone pair. So, of course, we're going to draw the uh, shape seesaw because this is where the electron uh, lone pair is going to be. And the basic shape is actually the trigonal bipyramidal. So the ground state for sulfur is uh, sulfur is the element of period 3, so 3s, 3p, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the excited state is one, two, three, four, five, three S, three P, three D, one, two, three, sorry, this one is not here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, hybrid state would be have one, two, three, four, five. So SP three D because one is for the lone pair and another four is for the covalent bonding sigma bond with the pi. Okay. So sulfur is in the middle and this is the lone pair and then you have this one, you have this one, you have this. These are all five hybrid orbitals and you're going to have fluorine with this sigma bond fluorine with this sigma bond and this fluorine with this sigma bond and another one here lastly so this is the orbital overlapping for SF4 seesaw buffer solution is important not only in chemistry but also in biology it's a solution that can maintain pH so we add in buffer solution in case something is going to happen, acid will be added, base will be added, but we want to maintain the pH. So maintaining the pH is important. So we use buffer solution. What are buffer solution? When we have acid, we have to add its salt. If it is basic, we have to add its salt also. So basically, Buffer solution for acidic is going to have a weak acid and we are going to combine it with the salt of its kind. And for basic solution, the buffer is going to consist of weak base together with its salt. Uh, so um, I'm combining um, the videos that I've done from the lecture in order for you to understand how to use um, or why we use uh, henderson hasselbalch equation as uh, we should. By having the action of buffer solution, we are going to use henderson hasselbalch equation to find the pH of the buffer solution. The pH of acidic buffer solution goes for the reaction below. Find the Ka for the first equation and then you move the concentration of H plus to the front as subject and you're going to get H plus equals to concentration of acid divided by concentration of salt multiplied by Ka. If we have Ka, we are able to find the pH. By taking negative logarithm at both sides of the formula, on the left, we're going to have negative log H plus. On the right, we're going to have negative log Ka multiplied by negative log concentration of acid divide by concentration of salt and we're going to get pH equals to pKa plus log salt over acid. Now let's do the pH calculation of basic buffer solution. Ammonium chloride will dissociate completely to become ion of ammonium and ion of chloride and Ammonia is going to be ionized in water to uh, dissociate partially to produce ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. So when we calculate the Kb for the reaction, the second equation there, we can see NH4 plus, okay, divide by NH3, multiply by OH minus. This is the KB expression. And we want to know the OH minus, right? So we put as a subject 
and the Henderson has a work equation becomes like this. Taking the negative logarithm for both sides of the equation, we're going to get negative log OH minus equals to negative log KB multiplied by negative log concentration of ammonia divided by concentration of ammonium ion. So we're going to have POH equals to PKB plus log Concentration of ammonium ion divided by concentration of ammonia. Understanding the Henderson Hasselbalch equation alone is not enough for us because we need to do um, exercise. So here is a combination between two parts of chapter 7. A here is to calculate the pH of a weak acid. Uh, so I'll show you A first. You have to develop a equation, balance equation. And remember, the arrow must be a reversible arrow because this is a weak acid. It dissociates partially. And then you know that this weak acid has a Ka. Ka is given. So we want to get information from this Ka. So what is Ka expression? As shown here, concentration of H plus multiplied by concentration of ClCH2COO minus the, the uh, part where you have the conjugate base. And then where uh, this is the acid. Uh, so, you fill in the information given in the question. K is 1.38 times 10 to the power negative 3. And then uh, H plus is unknown, X. And then CLCH2CO minus is unknown. So, this is X square. And CLCH2COOH is actually, if you do a real ice table, is actually 0 0.1. The... the uh, initial um, concentration 0 0.1 minus x okay so this is ka 10 to the power of negative 3 suppose we assume when 10 to the power of negative 4 and below but here we still assume because even if we do quadratic it's going to have the same answer uh, so uh, it's okay if you don't uh, do the quadratic here. Uh, uh, you can assume because it's going to uh, give the same answer uh, 1.93 h. So you find x okay, 0 0.011747 and you uh, make the negative log. So you get 1.93. Okay, now uh, that one is only to calculate the pH of the acid, chloroethanic acid. Chloroethanic acid, if you don't know, this is a weak base. Sorry, weak acid. Um, we, a strong acid is only HCl, H2SO4. Uh, the others are all weak acid. Uh, okay, now we go to buffer. Buffer is now uh, being prepared by adding sodium chloroethanoate. This is the salt of the acid. So how much do we add? 500 ml, 0.1 molar. So we calculate the concentration of that solution of sodium chloroethanoate. 0.1 molar divided by 0.5. That is the concentration uh, of the salt. So, put it into henderson hasselbalch equation and you're going to get straight away the pH 3.16. So, it's not really maintaining the um, original pH. Um, so, this is not a really good buffer solution. Okay? Titration is something that you have done the practical at the beginning of the semester. You do the practical first before you learn the theory. So theoretically, 
we are doing a reaction between an acid and a base called neutralization and we're going to produce a salt solution NaOH plus HCl becomes NaCl a salt diluted in water liquid water so basically for chapter 7 acid base titration we want you to calculate the pH at a various stages of uh, titration at the beginning of the titration when no neutralization occur it would be the pH of the acid itself because you're going to uh, do the calculation for the pH in the Allen Meyer flask and then uh, you're going to uh, find pH at certain stages of titration when you add 10 ml of sodium hydroxide, 24.9 ml of sodium hydroxide at the equivalent point whereby the amount of sodium hydroxide is the same with the amount of HCl in the conical flask. And then what is the pH or pOH of the solution when you add more sodium hydroxide? 25.1 for example, 30 for example, 35 ml for example. So the pH is going to be more than 7. So you're going to have a series of number as a pH and you're going to sketch it. So this is important for you to do, especially um, practice 7.5. In uh, Orange Book 215, you must do this um, um, exercise. And don't forget to prepare with you a graph paper uh, so that you're going, you're going to uh, produce a smooth distorted S-curve. Okay, so I'm just going to run again the uh, explanation that I've done uh, for the video in this uh, lesson 40 all right let's do example 7.18 in page 214 consider the addition of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution from a burette to an Allen Mayer flask conical flask containing 25 ml of 0.1 molar HCl calculate the pH of the solution before the titration begin and after the addition of 24, 25, and 35 ml of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Firstly, for A, we have not done the titration yet. And in the conical flask, in the Erlenmeyer flask, there's only acid. HCl is a strong acid, therefore it ionizes completely. You can see the equation there. And given the concentration of the acid is 0.1 molar. So all you have to do is just make a negative logarithm of it and you're going to get pH equals to 1. This is your first dot. Okay, now here is the R table for the neutralization reaction of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. The first step that we need to do is find the number of moles for HCl. 25 is the volume multiplied by the molarity 0.1 divide by a thousand because this is calculated in liters we got 2.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 sodium hydroxide has the number of mole 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 3 calculate using the same method okay then we look at the change. We're going to use all of the OH minus supplied by sodium hydroxide, which is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3. So the 2.5 will be deducted with 2.4, making it to only have 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4 
mole. Uh, this is the final number of mole for HCl. So we find the new concentration of HCl. We have to find the total volume. The total volume is 25 plus 24 divided by 1000. We got 49 times 10 to the negative 3. So the concentration now is 2.04 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar. And the pH solution now is calculated from the amount of hydrochloric acid left after partial neutralization. This is not yet the end point. So we use negative logarithm of H plus and we got 2.69. For C, what happens if we add the same amount of sodium hydroxide, 25 ml? We will notice that there is no H plus left and there is no OH minus left. We got 0.05 molar of sodium chloride as a product, as shown in the slide. The calculation involves a complete neutralization reaction. The salt does not undergo hydrolysis. So at equivalent point, the concentration of H plus is equal to the concentration of OH minus. Therefore, the pH is 7. Finally, for D, what happens if we add the volume of sodium hydroxide more than the volume of HCl in the conical flask. 35 ml multiply by the molarity 0.1 divide by a thousand that is the number of mole for sodium hydroxide there and we notice that we are going to have an extra sodium hydroxide at the final stage of the titration so we calculate the molarity. Uh, notice that the total volume of the solution now is 60 times 10 to the power negative 3 because we add 25 and 35. Oops, sorry. We got 60 over 1000 making 8 liters, so 10 to the power negative 3. The final concentration now is 0.017 molar. So basically, we are going to find the pOH first, which is 1.77, and then subtract it from 14, and we got pH 12.23. So what happens here is, we want you to plot the graph. We want you to sketch the graph. The graph is going to be pH on the y-axis, the volume of the uh, sodium hydroxide on the x-axis, and you're going to have four plotted points here. The first one having pH 2.69, the second one 7, the third one 12.23. What was the other one? Maybe, um, yeah, the first point when the titration has not begun, the sole pH of acid 0.1 molar, so that is 1 pH 1, pH 1, pH 2.69 page 5 and now page 12.23 you have to be able to sketch the graph and the curve would be a distorted s all right okay i'm going to show you how to draw the titration curve if you have a if you have a graph paper it would be uh, very good so i'm drawing the axis the y-axis is the pH and then the x-axis will be the volume of sodium hydroxide in ml. Okay, we have four points. 
the first one is 1, 2.69, 7, and 12.23. So before we uh, do the titration uh, at 0 ml, the pH is 1. So this is the first dot. And then when we do titration at 25 ml, not 25, 24 ml, we got the pH 2.69 so it's around here okay and then the next point is at the equivalent point which is 7 so this is 3 4 5 6 7 this is 7 so the equivalent for 7 is important we draw this very clearly like this Ah, this is the equivalent equivalent point whereby the pH is equals to seven, and then at thirty five we have eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve point two three. That would be here somehow. Okay. That is 35, right. How are we going to draw the curve? The curve is an, uh, this, uh, is a distorted, distorted S. Uh, so it looks like an S, but it is distorted. So the first thing that you do is the vertical line in the middle here, going across the equilibrium point. And then the curve there. This one also going to the curve over here. Uh, so this is how you draw the titration curve.